Hey guys, welcome back to today's episode of Jaffo Plays. Uh, we are going to attempt to play Mansions of Madness for a second time. Uh, if you guys have been following along, we played the Cycle of Eternity mission, and it did not turn out so well for us. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Miss Agatha Crane passed away from horrible, horrible injuries to both her brain, both her psyche and her body. It was more, and, it was uh, more body than anything. And that was uh, just too much for uh, Preston to accept. And he just left the investigation and said, meh, whatever. Um, I, gotta, this time, I gotta take some days vacation to right. get over this. This time, we're going to switch it up. And I wanted to show you guys a little bit of kind of the behind the scenes of getting ready. So I have chosen William Yorick, the grave digger, who has a wonderful sculpted little dude, looks like that. And then you. I am. Gesundheit. I'm probably going to be pronouncing this wrong, so I apologize in advance. Uh, I'm guessing her name is uh, Min T Fan. She is this one. Who is very fluent in a lot of languages. And I am a secretary for. Mr. Thomas. Alrighty. You're from Mr. Thomas. Oh, uh, I'm a grave digger. He wanted to be an actor who had worked for years in Boston, taking whatever parts were available. Shakes to yeah. We're just gonna stop. So, so the, that makes sense why he his model like is your, holding a skeleton head. Looks like head. Shakespeare. All right. So like, we've got. Yeah, it's like she knows English, French, Vietnamese, Korean, and Japanese. Holy shit. All right, so we are going to retry the Cycle of Eternity mission, mostly due to uh, filming constraints, because it claims to be a 60 to 90 minute game. The last one took us about 90 plus minutes, and a lot of that had to do with we were learning some rules and cutting it up for film's sake. So the next step we do is we go to select our investigators. I see Min Tai and William. Then we gain our starting items. Holy Cross, Holy Water, Kerosene Lantern, Machete, and Feed the Mind. So, both of us are pretty eh on spells, I see. We're pretty eh on everything across the board. We became Team Average. That's okay. So we got Feed the Mind. We have Holy Cross. Hey, look, we at least know what that one does. Holy we Water. We know what that one does. Kerosene Lantern and Machete. Machete. And somewhere in here. Kerosene lantern. I uh, say so you should take that. I get the machete, she says. Um, let me discard this card to convert uh, all yeah. clues. You can have the Holy Cross because I have the better willpower. Two. Stars while attacking unarmed, so that's probably good for me right now. Then I'll take the holy water, and you can take feed the mind. There we go. So once we go there, we continue our setup. We're gonna load this up. Ooh, um, we got a different one. We get a different quote. Sometimes I believe that the le that this less material life is our true li truer life, and that our vain presence on the ter on the terraqueous globe itself, the secondary or merely virtual phenomena. Let's see if you look. It's like. The T and the R look very similar. Yeah, they do. So once again, we have the same opening. You've been investigating the disappearances surrounding a wealthy neighborhood for two weeks, but you have nothing to show for it. We can force this come forward. If you guys have watched our previous video, you've already seen this. See? Hey, look! As we... See. Stated at the end of our last one. Your car rattles up an uneven drive, pulling to a stop in front of the estate. Uh, several cars and carriages are parked along the drive. However, the butler who contact you is nowhere to be seen. You knock on the large door, uh, on the large orc door, orc, oak door, not orc door, <laughs> oak door to no response. Fearing something has happened, you try the handle and the door swings open into a lavish entryway. Place the lobby tile and walls as indicated. There is a painting up that way. And I think...
think that is it. Oh, nope, there's a painting over here as well. That's the one thing I kind of wish that they put that a little bit lower oh, when, I know. when showing you tiles. I know. So we start here. You step into the warmth of the house. A strange stillness hangs in the air, and your footsteps footsteps echo through the quiet entrance. Place your investigator they are, figures. They are showing the wrong figures there. They are showing our last figures. They are. <laughs> I'm just wondering if that's like the, the programmed stock. That's or probably the stock people. <laughs> it's like that's what they just in have the middle programmed. of the lobby sits a table with a small pile of papers. Place a search token there. I feel like I can always search something right here. A table with a telephone sits at the top of the staircase on the right. Place a search token as indicated. A mysterious painting of a nighttime landscape looms over the lobby staircases. Place one there. Ooh, the crash comes this, from this side. I will tell you, this is also new. The crash has always come from this side. Yeah. Because even in the test one that you originally yep. showed me. The silence is broken by muffled shouts and sounds of crashing pots and pans coming from the door to your left. Place an explore token as indicated. We can put a barricadable door or barricade there as a shelf stacked with books and other objects nearby. Placing it in front would prevent a, provide a barricade. No, there is a statue there. No, no, now there's that. Mm -hmm. Three other doors lead into the mansion. Place explore tokens as indicated. One more up there. Oh. All the doors have oh, an exploration okay. token, is what they're saying. This one's got a lot of stuff here. So we know, I mean, just from playing previously, we know this room is going to enter to the kitchen. Yep. Um, Which, you should probably get ready. Yep. So we'll just put, put that off to the side. Um, I mean... We can always go ahead and investigate these doors as far as what they are. This door leads deeper into the mansion. Uh, this door leads deeper into the mansion. Ooh, we're getting lots of information. Deep. This is leads to a small front room of the mansion. So that one we're probably going to get like a two panel. Probably. Because there's nothing smaller than a two panel currently. Um, so we just need to decide what to do with who to do. Whenever to defeat a monster. Well, all right, I'm going to go first because I'm going to kick over this. Door. Okay, that works. Since I know there's monsters there and I get clue tokens. Oh, we got two clue tokens each, by the way. Oh, yes. Bam. Blammo, son. So there's no way out of this room. Remove that. The door always swings open to reveal a dining room in chaos. An aging man in a tail, tail, tailcoat scrambles through a serving window into the kitchen as he tries to escape a strange black creature writhing on the dining room table. Discard the uh, explorer, place the dining room, and wall as indicated. That same old hunt and horror comes right there. And I'm going to go find that kitchen knife right away because I bet you that's coming out too. Bones popping. <sighs> the creature turns to face me, and its black serpentine body shifts and changes, playing tricks on my eyes as I try to focus on it. The creature unfurls its leathery wings and unleashes a blood-curdling screech. Spawn a hunting horror, then suffer two horror with neg with horror to negate. All right, or will to negate the horror. I have. I two. suffer two. I block two. I suffer no damage. Well, this is a good start. Better start than last time. In the center of the dining room table is a carved knife, a carving knife embedded in a, in a roast. Place the knife common item here. I can spend. You can pick it up in a, as part of a trade action. Oh, isn't it here? Is that where it sits? Yeah, it showed where. Oh, then it's in the same space. I'm not even paying attention. A china cabinet it stands on against the wall, though it looks as to have been repurposed to store all manner of knickknacks. Place a search token. You see a kitchen. Th you see a kitchen through the serving window. Most of the cabinets are ajar due to the food preparation, but that has been locked shut with chains. Search token there. Uh, in the kitchen, if someone's left a refrigerator open, the water leaks out of a puddle. Place search token there. And place Eugene back there. So there we go. Then I may move one space into there. 
And since you were so nice and kind to let me start with a machete, I shall attack with my bladed weapon. You slash wildly, blinded, blinded by fear and rage. Your arms moving of their own accord. Agility, too. Uh oh Nope. One. You only least got one. If you fail, you swing cleaves only air. Had I hit him, uh, damage equal to the weapon's damage plus my test result, I would have been able... Max I could have done was a murder. Unfortunately, I, I, I succeeded at failing. Uh, we continue. Put him away until it's you, and it's your turn. We, I'm gonna search gonna the search. table. This shoveled pile of paper sits on the table. The papers stacked on the table are invitations marked with today's date. The stars have come around to their positions in the cycle of eternity. The Vanderbilt Astronomy Association cordially invites you to a celebratory evening. Gain a clue, discard the search token. So some of these, are, as you're going to notice really quickly, are going to stay the same. But, like, these items, if they're not important, might get different items out of them. Instead of, a squid, instead of squid bandages, we might find, I don't know, Squid King James Bible. <laughs> or Squid Lucky Rabbit's Foot. Or... Squid... Maybe not even Squid. Or Squid, Le squid 45 Automatic. You know, never know. Yeah, you're right, maybe not even Squid. What else would you like to do? Um, Run away. Yeah. I'm going to kick open the door. Kick open this door. Ooh. The light from the entry shines into the dimly lit office as you open the door. A lamp sits on a large wooden desk, casting long shadows across a mess of papers and books scattered around the room. Discard the Explore token and place the office and wall as indicated. Um. Office. Looks like it the goes chair this goes way. This over here. So that lines up there. And there is a wall of sorts here, it looks like. Yep. Wall there. The desktop under the lamp is cluttered with papers. Place a search token. Hey, look, we found the Bible already. Across the room, a bouquet stack of books other, and other items stands against one wall. Among the items, you spot something useful. Place the King James Bible indicated. The investigator can pick that up with a trade action. You may move one space into an explored area. And, and I believe it. that's it. Okay. The wind howls and shivers down your spine. A storm is brewing with no immediate effect. Well, that's nice. The hunting horror moves three spaces towards the investigator within range with the highest health. I mean, technically that's either one of us, but it's me because I'm like, like literally right there. And then he's going to attack me. The creature swoops forward and slashes at me with a mottled yellow claws. Suffer three damage with my agility three to negate. I suffer three damage. Has this been shuffled? I don't know. No. We, we will shuffle I this. I did not shuffle these since I put Agatha's death on there. Three damage. One, two, three damage has been gained. It's like if this was Agatha, Agatha would be almost dead. Each investigator must resolve a horror check against the monster within range. That's just me. Black Icker runs over the monster's teeth, pooling on the ground beneath as it tastes the air. Willpower, two. Don't taste the air. That's not good. I got two. If you pass, you remain still and calm. That's it. But otherwise, you suffer through the Pretty much. Uh, that's the end of that monster. Face. 
Yes. May I stab it, please? Go ahead. You keep your blade whirling around you as you seek an opening, fending off the creature's attacks with sharp steel. I need an agility of two. I will make that an agility of two. If you pass, your parry leaves an opening and you step forward, stabbing again and again. The monster suffers damage equal to your weapon's damage plus your test result. At least you did something. I did so much that I shall attack him again! You slash wildly, blinding by fear and rage. Your arms moving of their own accord make that same agility 2 plus test. Doesn't matter, I don't pass. Whatever, it was a blank anyways. You know, for having a, uh, a 1 in 3 chance, or a little more than a, than a 1 in 2 chance of failing, I fail a lot. All right, I'm done playing with him. I'll put him away. Your turn. Wee! Search. The desk is covered in random clutter with a small space cleared in front of the chair for working. You dig through the dense paperwork cluttering the desk looking for anything of interest. Make an observation test. I got an observation for... Are you going to turn that into one hit? I will make that into a one. As you shuffle through the seemingly endless paperwork covering the desk, you spot a weathered journal that looks out of place amidst the mundane clutter. The cover of the journal is marked Lilith Vanderbilt. Gain the old journal unique item and discard this item, this token, or this search token. The, investigators ho the investigator holding the old journal can read, it, read through it, its entries by interacting with it in the app. The old journal. It is some evidence. This journal entry in the culprit's own handwriting is practically a confession. So, there is now a new item here. There is a items tab. And you could take a read action to read the book. Yeah, I'll do that. You turn, into, you turn to an entry from several years ago. William has gotten increasingly secretive since he started Astronomy Association. He has been working on some secret projects in the attic and even installed a lock and alarm to keep people out. What he does not know is that I have found the writing he installed in his bedroom in the back of the house. I can use it to unlock the door to the attic when he is gone. Gain a clue. Sweet, I gained that clue token that was just in the lock. The journal entries continue on for several months. You can continue reading as an action. Well, you're out of actions. I'm out of actions, so we're out of turn. It is the Mythos phase. Darkness falls. Inky blackness envelops William York, bringing him, bringing with it a soft, gentle susurrus. Place darkness in each space in William York's room. Then he suffers one face down horror. Oh, this is not good. Who's got the kerosene lantern? I do. Come, come light my room for me, oh, please. Oh, I, I was like, I was gonna ask, what, what do the light sources do? They, well, more importantly, you should worry about what darkness tokens do. I was wondering why there was a keyword light source. Darkness is a feature that hinders an investigator's test resolution. An investigator in a space containing darkness cannot spend clue tokens to convert dice results or perform additional puzzle steps. Investigators ignore darkness in a space containing a light source. Or, a f or fire, or a space adjacent to a space containing a light source or fire. A space containing a light source, if an investigator is in the space, has a light source, or the light source has been placed or dropped in the space. Darkness cannot be placed in a space that contains darkness. So you can't dark the dark, but... I do suffer a face-down horror. I do get to make a four-die willpower test to ignore it. Uh, I Two. succeed. Hunting horror moves up to three spaces to be within range of me, then attacks me, because it's me, with me. The creature's limbs whip out and out, impossibly far and fast. Make a strength two test. I succeed. If you pass, you tuck your head down and weather the storm. I'm good. I then get to make a horror test. 
How can such a monster exist? It flutters on wings too small to support its bulk, sliding sinuously through the sp through space where it should not fit. Through spaces, even. In its every movement sends a terrible thrill running down my spine. Suffer three horror, willpower minus one to negate. I cannot s convert those clues, so... Two. Two. And I'm beginning to think we actually are supposed to be taking these face up. Because I've, no I've been noticing the difference of face up and face down horror. Suffering the horror is these way this way. There it is. Somewhere. There we go. Yeah, I'm on camera. It's okay. So minor shock, no additional effect. Paranoia, whenever I end my turn within range of another investigator, flip the horror face up. And I think these damages are supposed to be face up too, which means I resolve my agility on one fewer tests and two minor injuries that do no nothing, do no, do nothing fancy, as I have a minor a ruptured eardrum now. Uh, you are not within range to get scared shitless. We are good. You know what? I'm going because I'm going to murder him. Okay. Even if I can't, because now I'm agilitying with one less die. Attack, bladed weapon. Of course, slash wildly, blinded by fear and rage, arms moving. Why am I doing this? It's probably because of the hunting horror. Uh, I get to roll two dice. No, I fail. I attack again. You cry out in fury and slash at your creature, your eyes blade gleaming. Nope. Sadness. Ah! No! I didn't want to not let you have a turn. Come, what do you want to do? Oh, I can see, sort of. Neat. And then I'm gonna punch him unarmed. You're going to attack him with an unarmed attack. With empty hands and the beast looming over you, you struggle to work up the courage to attack. An equal measure of bravery and insanity fuels your attack and you lash out at the creature. Willpower. Roll two extra dice if you have suffered three or more horror. Is this resolving a willpower test? Yes. Four, yeah, because it's using your willpower. Okay. I have not suffered three or more. That was fantastic. Four blanks. I believe you're done, aren't you? Yep. And since I didn't get any uh, <sighs> clue tokens, <laughs> it's like this stability. A senseless chatter rises, filling not just the air, but mint. But Min Minthi Fan's mind. Minthi suffers two horror with willpower plus one to negate. I get five. Three. That is two or better. You succeed. Three spaces towards. It's not going to move, but it's going to attack the person with the lower observation, which I believe is you. No, you're at four? I got four. So am I. Attacking and a tie. Monster. Monster. I think they had to give us one thing that was the same. Yeah, that's literally the one thing that was the same. I guess we can choose who takes it. I can take it. Okay. You hear the creature before you catch sight of it. Flying low, it slams into your center of your mass and carries you off, slashing and biting you all while, all the while. Suffer two damage with strength to negate. I got three strength. Suffer two damage. Yep. You have a twisted ankle, become restrained, then discard this card. So you get the restrained card. See, this would be fine if I, I was a little girl. Because you wouldn't care. Because she can't become restrained or stunned. 
And you also gain a muscle tear. You roll one fewer dice when resolving strength tests. Of course. Strength now what? Two? Yep. And move, then you and the monster move one space toward the dining room. But I can't move. It says can't, you cannot move voluntarily. Uh. Because I am restrained. That's voluntarily. So that's me moving? Yes. How do I become unrestrained? Uh, doesn't it say? At the oh, end did, of your turn, end, discard yeah. this card. So I guess I get to waste my time reading my book. That's fine. Um, we're both going to get scared. Carapless? Well, you're restrained by it. How about you go first? Creature vomits a fleshy pink pulp that you fear might have been a person. Suffer three horror neg- to negate. Uh, willpower. Yeah, four. Oh, I thought you had a willpower. Oh, that's right. We gave you that to make it four. Yeah. Sorry. Gonna use a clue or two. I'll use two. two. All right. Make that. Hey, it vomits in front of me as well, and I'm grossed out. Well, that always makes sense. <clears throat> We're both grossed out by the exact same thing. You're really grossed out. Yup. Suffer an additional face down damage. Then flip this card face down. Whenever you end your space in a turn with another investigator, take one item at random from another investigator in your space. Oh, lovely. As I am now kleptomaniac. Doesn't something happen because I'm near you now, the first one? When I end my turn within range. End oh. my turn. Okay. Uh, roll one fewer die when taking a lower test as I take a calcula. Cal- uh, a calculia? You you cannot seem to put the letters or numbers in their proper order. You know this has to you know you had the skill once, but you desert but it has deserted you. Hooray! I don't know if this is hard mode or not, but it probably this is. This seems like it is. Wait, what is your lore to begin with? Three. No, it's oh, a hey, look. So they made observation and lore the same for us. Could be. Because I have a four and a three. Observation, lore. So they at least made a couple things the same. Okay. I'm going to try and punch him again with my blade. So oh, does resolve it... a horror check. We already did that. Oh, I know. Yes, no. you forgot to press yes. investigator first. Okay. So what does darkness do since I since there's a light source? Because darkness is gone. Darkness is gone temporarily. I don't think you can remove the darkness tokens, but that is a good thing to look up and let you know in our next episode. So this is going to be to the end of today's episode. I hope you guys are enjoying what you see. Uh, things are looking a little bit differently than last time, but as typical for our Sunday morning uh, playthroughs, they're not going so well because we cannot seem to roll dice. Um, so yeah, we uh, uh, things are bad. And yeah, we'll find out what happens on our next episode. Thanks for stopping by. See you in the next one.